welcome to this second season of samvad ma'am we would like to explore on this topic uh, where children keep whining a lot uh, complaining a lot hanging on to the parents a lot why would this behavior come ma'am so there are two aspects since you saying they're also clinging mm. there's a component of anxiety there Mm. Uh, but generally when children complain and whine it's because they are not able to find a solution to something and why would that happen so for example let's say the most common uh, things that they would complain about is you know the teacher is not good uh, my pencil uh, uh, isn't working pen isn't working mm. they're going to find fault so basically what they are trying to gain our attention or take our attention towards is the fact that they are not able to complete a task or something isn't working mm -hmm. now simple thing would be you know the child that constantly loses things in mm -hmm. in uh, school will come back and tell the parent that you know my teacher didn't uh, find the eraser or will blame a friend he took it away from mm. me so whenever the child is assigning blame or complaining and whining there Even is an completion of work ma if they're not able to complete it when would you complain if i were to take an adult when would you complain it's usually when you're unable to find a Uh, easy solution or even a solution to something mm. i'm going to assign blame to somebody because i don't have the skill set or i don't know how to solve a problem so the most important aspect of this and if it's anxiety it's a completely different thing where the child is clinging and yes. doesn't want to let go in that case you know the parent has to co-regulate and work on an emotional regulation aspect mm. but i'd like to focus on the complaining aspect because mm. that is telling us that the child does not have necessary problem solving skills uh, for that particular task Mm -hmm. So are we giving something that child is not ready for or not prepared for it could be that it's age appropriate mm -hmm. it could be that they've not had the uh, had sufficient opportunities to you know explore and solve the problem it could be extremely high parental expectations mm -hmm. and fourth it could be that the child needs time to acquire a skill set because mm -hmm. nothing is hap uh, is going to happen overnight True. i know parents who expose the child to something now and they want to test um you know i can give you an example many years back there was a trainer who was talking to us about autism and how do you work with autism and he mentioned that you know when child is non verbal and he is not going to be able to speak this is how you work with it and after a certain period the child if you show a card he will follow through with an action now this is a very simple thing now what he didn't mention in his session was that it will take about 21 days to 3 months for this habit to happen okay. so one of the parents attended the workshop went home tried it with his son came back and he said the whole of yesterday evening i was trying this but my son is not saying it mm. so your technique does not work what mm. we don't understand is children take some time to acquire this and as parents we need to allow for that process to take place that was interesting ma'am how do we inculcate problem solving in children ma'am as parents the first and the most important thing is for the parent to understand that a child cannot solve a problem you are perceiving they can okay. only solve a problem they can perceive and can you elaborate a bit or give an example on that? most parents think that you know children are not writing because they are lazy okay this is the parental perception because yeah. they assume that the child is avoiding the task because they are lazy however and probably the child is not even ready physically or age why she is not even ready uh, to write exactly which is why i said it has to be from the child's perspective mm -hmm. the child's perspective is this is a difficult task mm -hmm. and therefore i may need to uh, you know acquire the skills for it mm -hmm. so first we need to understand is this your expectation and perception mm -hmm. or does the child know that this is a problem right so when the child repeatedly loses things in school mm -hmm. right does the child understand that it's not allowed because for the child it's not a problem i lose an eraser i come home you give me another eraser problem solved mm. as opposed to a child who goes to school loses an eraser and doesn't have an eraser the next day realizes that when i don't have an eraser i need to take care of my eraser so mm. we need to create those opportunities for them to understand that this is a problem area and it doesn't have to be in a punitive manner it need not it shouldn't in fact be because mm. you can't change behavior by making somebody feel worse about themselves mm. behavior change happens only when somebody feels better true right that's very important also once they are able to understand that this is the problem they've identified the problem and have a perception about it the second step happens which is brainstorming with them about the possible solutions mm -hmm. right let's assume that the child is getting bullied 
Mm. Let's take different examples. So let's assume that the child is being bullied in school. They're constantly coming and complaining about this one child, one child. in school. Yes. Now, as an adult, mm. you know, if you don't understand what the child is really struggling with, you're only going to say you speak back to him mm. or you hit him or something like that. Give, give them a solution that the child may not be ready. Now, I may be in grade four and I may be, uh, you know, teased by somebody who's in grade six. Mm. I can't physically go and hit because I may be also physically much smaller True. than the other person. True. The parent is talking from an adult perspective. perspective. On the other hand, in the brainstorming of solutions, before I go into the brainstorming, I need to first find out what my child finds difficult. Okay. So it could be that, you know, I just don't want to be called names. Right. Second thing could be that I want to stand up for myself. Mm -hmm. Third thing could be that, you know, I want to be able to make friends yeah. so that this criticism or this teasing doesn't affect me. So I need to understand what is it my child really wants in this situation okay. as opposed to let's stop the bullying. Okay, fine. Secondly, once I've identified what my child wants from this situation, then I would ask them what are the many ways in which we can reach this and ask it as a question. Mm -hmm. Because when we give it as a statement, Solution. I'm not going to allow my child to acquire problem solving. Mm -hmm. I'm going to entrust upon them or rather push down their throat something that they may not be able to digest. And that way we're not inculcating problem solving skills in the child. And when we don't inculcate, they tend to complain even further. Yes, ma'am. And you know, that's where asking the question is important mm. because when I ask a question, it goes to the part of the brain mm. that can look for solutions as opposed to a statement where, you know, I just need to break it down into action. And if I don't have that skill, it will not go there. So brainstorming together and then the child will come up with amazing answers. You know, they'll even talk about superheroes, <laughs> all of these things, and that's natural for them. As a parent, I need to listen to every uh, solution, solution without judging it or belittling it or uh, denying it, shaming, none of those things. I listen to all the uh, things and then ask them, okay, how will you make this happen? What mm. are the steps you can follow here? Mm. Do you think it will work? This way you're also helping them strategize. Yes, we're also helping them look for ways mm. and letting them know that, you know, nothing ends. Mm -hmm. You do always have the opportunity to look for more options this would be something and then once all this happens zero in on one or two strategies that the child finds most effective True. in their perspective and then let them go and try it out once they try it out they will know for sure it's working or not working mm. then sit down with them do a review mm. this way what happens is the child realizes that when i have a problem i don't need to complain mm. i need to identify what the problem is look for ways to solve it try it out review it and start again. This, in the long run, helps them overcome this issue of complaining and nagging. And also I think this will build a great relationship with parents, the communication relationship. You're strategizing, you're coming out with actionable points, you're creating a safe space for child to come. You're also building their confidence. I think it's an amazing way to address this issue. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that information. I hope to see you all in the next episode of Samvad.